Hey there kids, welcome to another math lesson on video for Eureka Math, grade five. We're in module four, this is lesson 30 homework. And I strongly, like I insist, go watch the problem set video before you do your homework. And before you watch this video, make sure your homework is completed so that you can stretch your brain and really try to figure out if you do know this concept well enough um, this video is just supposed to help you check your work. Uh, the objective is at the bottom of the page, divide decimal dividends by non-unit decimal divisors. So lesson 29 is talking about uh, unit divisors and so unit fractions and really easy numbers, you know, one tenth, one one hundredth, um, not really even one one thousandth. But now we're just really looking at do you know your multiplication facts? Because when dividing, basically you're finding the missing factor to divide. So uh, the second thing that you're going to really be thinking about besides your multiplication facts is how the divisor is going to control the situation. And for each of these in lesson 30, it's really easy because our our dividend and our divisor have the same number of decimal places. So this is tenths and tenths. This is tenths, oh, and hundredths. And so this is one time, like it's very few times that we actually get to do something fun where we have to use this skill. But uh, the divisor is gonna control the situation here and uh, to help us solve these problems. And then it gets really easy. So this is mostly done, but they're started and then we will finish. So you're gonna take each number and you're going to put it in its proper place in a fraction, then take the fraction and note what the denominator is. The bottom number is in charge. If you have a single digit to the right, we're going to use only 10. Use 10 as your scale factor on the top and bottom, no matter how many places there are up here. does not matter. The denominator is in charge. Okay. Uh, when you rescale or resize these numbers, we end up with, when you multiply by 10, we get 24 divided by 8. And that leaves you with a very simple 3 as your answer. So if you um, take a look at this one, this has tenths and then hundredths. Okay, so we've got one place here and two places here. Two places here. So you take your two and four tenths, 24 tenths, and you've got your eight hundredths on the bottom. This is the only interesting one on, the, on this side. And so the denominator is in charge again. Now, since I have two places, I have to have a two place or 100 as my scale factor. Um, fact, scale factor. So I need to move the decimal two places to the right. The only way I can do it is by multiplying by 100. So you do that and then what do you get up here? Well you're going to get more than 24 because it has to move two places. So add a zero to it and then you still have the 24 divided by 8 which is 3 but you also have the zero because it's actually 240. So that's the only interesting one here. Let's get a couple of practice problems in. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take this and turn it into a fraction. Knowing that this first number goes on top and the second goes on the bottom, this is the dividend, this is the divisor. Dividend, divisor. Now take it and figure out what is the scale factor going to be. If I've got 4.8 and 0 0.6, the denominator's in charge. That means it's going to be one place. I only have to move the decimal or shift it one place. That means I get 10 tenths as my scale factor. When you multiply both numbers by 10, you end up with 48 over 6. And that should be a really easy fact for you. There's your answer. Same thing over here, 0 0.48 or 48 hundredths divided by 0 0.06. Same actual numbers where we have that basic fact that we have to know, which you already figured out over here. Take your numbers and figure out what your scale factor is. What should we multiply by this time? Should it be 10 tenths? No, it should be 100 one hundredths because I have to move it two times. When I do the movement two times on both, I end up with the same thing that I had before. So it actually just becomes recognizing which number's in charge, 
how do I move that decimal? And then all of a sudden, we've got easy numbers to divide. Okay, so this lesson's kind of fun, easy, as long as you know your math facts. All right, 84 tenths, you could call that 8 and 4 tenths divided by 7 tenths. Rewrite, set it up so you're thinking about what your scale factor is, and your scale factor should be 10 tenths. Hopefully you got that right. Next thing you're going to do, multiply. Move the decimal out of both. Do the division. This one actually is bigger than 10 because 7 times 10 is 70, so you have a couple extra 7s on there. Take the next one. Set it up as a fraction. Notice how many decimal places are to the right. Again, nothing very challenging. And then you have to figure out the scale factor. So what scale factor are we going to use? We're going to use 10 tenths? No, you're going to use 100 hundredths because we have two places here and two places here, whereas this one only had one and one. One place, one zero. One place, one zero. Got to be the same. Two places, two zeros. Two places, two zeros. Got to be the same. Multiply this by 100 and get 84. Multiply this by 100 and get 7. And we're back where we started here, 84 divided by 7. Easy peasy. On the back, got a couple more. Okay, same thing. Set it up. 4.5 divided by 1.5. Who's in charge? The denominator. What's our scale factor? 10 tenths. Multiply to move that decimal out, so we get 45 divided by 15. When you divide that, you get 3. Set this up in a fraction. Set it up with our scale factor. Is it one time or two? It's two. Multiply to move the decimal out. Does that look familiar? It should, because it's the same as we had before. Set this up in a fraction. Okay. And again, we're, I'm always looking for it. Did they give us anything interesting? No, it's tenths and tenths, hundredths and hundredths, tenths and tenths, hundredths and hundredths. So they all match on the back, not like that first one or problem B or whatever it was on the front top. So setting it up, looking for our what's going to be our scale factor? Ten tenths. Multiply to move out the decimal. If you know your facts... That's real easy. 12 times 12. 12 times 12 is 144. Then we've got hundredths and hundredths. And since we have hundredths and hundredths, we're going to multiply by 100 hundredths. Move out the decimal in both and divide. I feel like it's almost unfair that that is just so easy. And I hope that you guys are loving this lesson too, as much as I do. Okay, now here's where you really have to explain. So Leanne says 18 divided by 6 is 3. So 18 tenths divided by 6 tenths should be 3 tenths. And 18 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths should be 3 hundredths. Is Leanne correct? Explain how to solve these division problems. So. When you have ones, okay, you get these, uh, this 18 divided by 6 is 3. If I have, I'm changing both of these, I've got the same ratio, what happens is that I'm going to end up with 3 for this one as well. So take your 18 tenths divided by 6 tenths times the 10 tenths. It's really just the same ratio. And so that is three as well. 
Okay, if I had the same thing in hundredths, okay, we are not equaling, we are multiplying to get that scale factor. They're both hundredths, so you would move out or multiply by 100 hundredths, and you would end up with 18 divided by 6 again for 3. So they all equal 3. Because you're, it's like when you have the 6 tenths and you are dividing it, sorry, you have 18 tenths and you're dividing it by 6 tenths, you can fit 3, 3 whole 6 tenths into the 18 tenths. That's what they're trying to have you understand. If I have 18 hundredths and I'm dividing it by hundredths, it, hundredths divided by hundredths would be ones. Tenths divided by tenths is ones. Ones divided by ones is ones. So you're, you should always end up with this whole number when you are dividing both pieces that are the same place value, okay? So your scale factor is gonna be, for tenths and tenths, it's gonna be just 10 tenths. For hundredths divided by hundredths, hundredths. And so when they fit equally into each other like a whole number of times. I don't know if that's clear, but they should all be three. Okay, and, um, and so then show, show your work here and solve it the way that we've been doing it. Use the, the method. Okay, so another way you could write it is tenths divided by tenths is ones. Okay, it, it fits that whole number of times. Same with hundredths. That is a U, holy moly. Hundredths divided by hundredths. That also is going to fit equally one time, okay? Um, so show your work, write out an explanation. That should be good enough. And then we've got uh, Denise and some bean bags here. Denise is making bean bags. She has six and four tenths pounds of beans. If she makes each bean bag eight tenths pounds. How many bean bags will she be able to make? So we have our whole amount. And we're dividing by the size of one. Okay, so you can take, just like we did on the previous page, take the whole amount, the dividend, divide it in fraction form. We know that they both are tenths. Multiply by a scale factor of 10 tenths. That's going to give you 64 eighths which is eight, eight bean bags. Sometimes my writing is like, what? So messy, sorry, apologies. Okay, for part B, if she decides instead to make mini bean bags that are half as heavy, that's gonna be the bean bags here being 0 0.4, how many can she make? Now not considering that she made any of these because she decides instead. So we haven't made any, you don't have to calculate anything there. Still six and four tenths pounds, but we have a different divisor. We have a different divisor, but it still has tenths. So you're gonna use the same scale factor. Move your decimal out in the same way and then divide these. This one is bigger than 10 because they're over 40, but by how much? So four goes into six, one time with two left over, and then 24 divided by four is six. 16 bags of the mini variety should be your answer. Hopefully you got that. And, oh, come on now, click subscribe. You got a second, just go over and click subscribe, real easy. You know you wanna come back and watch more math videos. I am trying to be a little bit helpful, I'm trying to be a good coach, good teacher. All right, my students do find these videos quite helpful, and the kids in the other classes too, so tell your friends. All right, a restaurant, last one, a restaurant, small salt shakers contain six-tenths ounces of salt, the small ones do. The large shakers hold twice as much. All right, I, I always want to just stop and go, okay, they didn't tell us but I can figure this out right now. Twice as much as 6 tenths, okay? That's two of these. That is twice as much. 
okay, ounces. The shakers are filled from a container that has 18 and 6 tenths ounces of salt. If eight large ones are filled, how many small shakers can be filled with the remaining salt? So what they've done is they've said, okay, solve for this, but now you have to use up eight of them. Now, if I'm using eight times one and two tenths or 12 tenths, that's really just a multiplication problem, okay? You shouldn't be doing repeated addition at this point anymore. You should know how to multiply with decimals, okay? Tenths times ones is tenths, unlike what we did previously with the same one dividing. Eight times two is 16. Eight times one is eight plus one is nine tenths or one place here no places here makes tenths nine and six tenths ounces are used for the large shakers now what does that mean so if eight large shakers are filled how many small shakers can be filled with the remaining so what's remaining well what did i start with 18 and six tenths and then i used some and so we want to take those away. This is used. We were talking in my class about key words. So if it's, if it's filled or used or removed from the situation, that's a subtraction problem. So subtract here. 18 minus 9 is 9. You can do all the borrowing, but you're just going to end up with 18 again. So now I have 9 ounces that are left. Okay? Now I need to take that 9 ounces and we have to consider what the small shakers can hold. So I'm gonna start here. You can just use nine if you want. But I do have six tenths in each of the small shakers. And so I'm gonna divide nine by six tenths. Now noting, knowing that this, they both have tenths, but it doesn't really matter about this one. It matters here, though. So 10 tenths is your scale factor. In fact, you could just leave that at 9, and you would still have to multiply by 10. So you're going to end up with 90 divided by 6. Um, if you want to set it up in bracket form so you can understand your carrying over, you can always do that. Okay? Sometimes I'll just do it like I, like I was doing up here, whatever. I don't know where I did it. Anyway, um, if you do it over here, you can kind of see the bringing down. So go ahead and do that. 9 divided by 6 is 1. Multiply, subtract, bring down. Now you can see that you had those three left over. You regroup it with the ones place, divide, multiply, and you're done. 15 small shakers. And that really is it for this assignment. Nothing left. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll, we'll see you on the next video, hopefully. Bye for now.